The Holy Spirit said to me this morning that God is very concerned about our attention. He's very concerned about our attention. I know that we use attention in a monetary format in terms of we pay attention. And we also use it in terms of grip and positioning, in terms of holding attention. We have a lot of distractions that have become attractions. And now the Holy Spirit is, is saying that we look forward to the distractions. We're looking forward to them. And so it, that, that has become a problem. And, and he told me when I was back in office this morning, he said, it's not that I'm so God and I know my position, I know my authority, and that I deserve your attention. He said that is true. But my attitude is the things that are distracting you are leading you away into things that are going to harm you. So out of a father's heart, I don't want you distracted. Amen. I don't want you going the way of something that's going to end in death. It's going to end in destruction or bring hurt or harm to you. So that's why we, we're, we're continuing with this. Where Jesus is saying, let me influence you. Let me influence you. And to just run through a little bit of this to kind of catch you up. If you weren't here last Sunday, but please watch last Sunday's message. YouTube.com slash Feast of the Lord. You've got to watch it. Jesus. And Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. Saw two brethren. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. Casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Of men, And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Last week we said people and things that we allow to influence us. Cause us to respond to the same request Jesus gave. Follow me and I will make you. We all have to be so very careful not to follow any and everything. Because whatever, whatever gets your attention, whatever we allow to influence us, will literally say, follow me and I will make you. And whatever you follow will make you what it is. Have characteristics of whatever you're following. Amen. Now. Luke 9. 23. 25. And he said to all. If any person wills to come after me. Let him deny himself. You know this is why. I love coming to Bible study here. Because I was here. This last Tuesday and Pastor Eddie started with the scripture and I wanted him to shut up because he was getting into Sunday's message. <laughs> like all the scriptures in the Bible, you had to use one that I'm going to start off with. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's where I come. It, it, when, when, when I come to Bible study, I'm going to testify. Can I have a testimony? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. Well, let me go ahead and testify. When I come to Bible study, I'll say it like this. Bible study is Sunday morning to me. It's Sunday morning to me. I get to come here and I literally get to be fed. Because I don't teach Bible study. 
And so I, I'm able to be fed and, and it, it stirs me up and I'm, I'm getting messages while Pastor Hayward or, or, or Pastor Eddie is teaching, while they, either of them are teaching, and I'm, I'm being filled, I'm being fed. I don't know about y'all, but Sunday ain't enough for me. Amen. I get fed from Sunday because just like a few minutes ago, the Holy Spirit just spoke something and that happens. The Holy Spirit, he, he speaks and, and I give you exactly what he's saying right then and there. So I'm fed. I'm, I'm getting it while y'all are getting it. Even though some of the things, of course, I know. But then Tuesday, oh my goodness, I get to just sit back and just get it. I just do. So I said all that because we preach from the same scripture, okay? And he said to all, if any person wills to come after me, let him deny himself, disown himself. Ladies, just because Jesus said himself, you included too. Yes. Amen. Amen, Amen to God. Disown himself. What do you mean disown yourself? I don't belong to me anymore. Oh, he got quiet. Forget lose sight of himself and his own interests. If you're going to come after Jesus, Jesus said, listen, now if you're going to follow me, forget all about you. Somebody said, oh, I just really want the presence of God in my life. I just love it that if I were to walk in a room, the presence of God would just go in with me. How do I get that? I heard somebody, Benny Hinn said, somebody... Or they usually ask him because in his services, when you go, the presence of God is just so thick. You could just almost take a handful of it. I mean, it is thick. <laughs> Been to several of them. And he said, people always ask me, how is it? How can I bring the presence of God? How can I? He said, the way that you bring in the presence of God is to lose your own. Lose your own presence. It's all about you, Lord, not about me. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Disown yourself, forget, lose sight of himself and his own interests. Refuse and give up himself. Amen. Wow, that's denying yourself. And take up his cross daily and follow me. Cleave steadfastly. Steadfastly to me, conform wholly, every bit of it, wholly to my example in living and if need be, in dying also. If need be. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So deny there means to disregard his own interests. Just disregard your interests. Remember we're talking about... Jesus saying, let me influence you. So disregard your own interests if you're going to follow me. Why? Because you'll be distracted by those interests and then they'll become an attraction. And then you're going to start looking for those things that are literally distractions. Take up your cross daily means this. I, I, I did a thorough study on this and it means which was usually used by those who on behalf of God's cause, hear this, do not hesitate cheerfully and manfully to bear persecutions. If I have to bear it, I'll bear it cheerfully and manfully, boldly, no problem whatsoever. Troubles and distresses. Thus recalling the fate of Christ and the spirit in which he encountered it. So often I would hear Pastor Hayward say, when I'm going through something, I just think about what Christ went through. Amen. Yes. I think about that. And this is exactly what this is saying. I think about what he went through. And I just cheerfully and manfully go through it. That's taking up your cross. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, it's not going to be for the fishes and the loaves. 
It's not going to be for all the good feelings and the prophecies and the getting healed. No, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to forget yourself. And you're going to have to be willing to go through stuff. That's why you don't hear us say, when you get saved, everything becomes rosy. Life just becomes so sweet. The devils never bother you. You know, if they bother Jesus, they definitely won't bother us. Yes. All right. We got it. Now, for whosoever would preserve his life and save it, will lose it. And destroy it. But whoever loses his life for my sake. He will preserve and save it. From the penalty of eternal death. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's what we try to do. We try to save our lives. We try to make sure that we're going to be all right. When you do that, you're going to lose it. Somebody said, what are you saying? We're not supposed to take care of ourselves. God said, cast your cares on me. Let me take care of you. Let, allow me to take care of you. We don't want to trust God because we never know what he's doing. Or at least that's our mindset. I don't know what God is doing. I don't know what he wants to do. I, don't, mm -mm, I need to take care of me and mine because you just never know. Really? Never know? And that's your father? Just never, never know. So I, I just take care of me and mine. No, 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 no. If you try to save your life, you're going to lose it. Listen, for some reason, the word would, and of course, in the original text, it means desires. For whoever desires... Even that desire to preserve. We have to watch our desire. Mm -mm, no, I'm, I, I'm not going to have anything to do with him. Because, you know, I got to look out for me. I got to look out for me. And I, I don't want to be, I don't want people to think this, that, and the other. Trying to save your life. Trying to save your reputation. What did God say do? Amen. Sometimes we forget to ask God. We live for him. We gave our lives to him. But sometimes we forget to ask him, Father, what do you really want me to do? Amen. Ah, Y'all, this kind of congregation this morning, eh? Let's, let's, let's go in. <laughs> Verse 25. For, see, all of this was leading up to this verse. This is the familiar passage. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and ruins or forfeits, loses himself? Yes. And of course, in the King James, it says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What is a profit? You got everything you want, find in yourself. Somebody say, you know, that person, they're just finding themselves. That's why they're going out buying all this stuff and, and be so flashy and wearing all this. That's, they just trying to find themselves. Yeah, yeah. What does it profit when you gain the whole world and you lose your soul in the process? Jesus said, don't try to find yourself. Lose yourself. Amen. Once you find me, lose everything else. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is like a man who, who finds treasure in this field and he goes and buys the entire field. Once you find treasure in Jesus, I want everything you got. Everything around you, everything about, I just want you. I found the king. Okay. Each part of our lives is either gaining or losing. In our relationship with God. Each part. We have to look at every part of our lives. Are we gaining in our relationship with God? Or are we losing? It's either going one way or another. Positive or negative. Up or down. In or out. Gaining or losing. Adding or subtracting. I want to go back to this. Man detected 
what God created, which is, of course, these brain waves that I talked about last week. This, this is God's creation. Man just detected it, but God himself created this. If you remember the beta waves, those at the top, those are the active. That's when we are conscious, we're active, we're learning, we're working. And then the alpha waves occurs when we're drowsy but not yet asleep. So you remember that. And I mentioned this and I'm, you'll see why I had to bring it back in this part too. In less than one minute of television viewing, a person's brain wave switches from beta waves, brain waves associated with active logical thought, to primarily alpha waves, of which a low level of alpha waves corresponds to anxiety, stress, and insomnia. You go from active to drowsy, one minute of television viewing. And I also mentioned that there's no need for a television advertiser, you know, with all the commercials and stuff like that. No need for a television advertiser to use subliminal messages in commercials because the brain is already in a receptive state, ready to absorb suggestions, even within just a few seconds of the television being turned on. Ready. The brain is ready. We're programmed. We don't turn the television on because we need more light in the room. Oh, I just have TV on just so some noise will be in the house. Oh, somebody guilty. I heard it. I heard it. I just heard it. Television shows, movies. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, kept speaking to me this week about books. He said, you need to talk about books because people are reading different books and different types of books that I'm not pleased with. And it's messing with them. It's causing them to, to think on this wise, which does the same thing that these television shows and movies do. Certain books, romance novels. I don't know why, it's, it's got a little strange. Because see, when you read in romance novels and, and those um, mystery novels and stuff, that stuff messes with you. It messes with how you think. It messes with literally how you are. All right. We're going to get into it a little bit. Television shows, movies, I'll add books, and other dramatic presentations that showcase killing, perversion, backbiting, bitterness, lies, train our minds via suggestions to believe the worst will happen in every situation. Yes. Programs us. Why do you think we, as soon as something happened, oh, Father, why did you, oh, Father, like that? Instead of saying, oh, my Father, woo. We always think the negative. Always, always, always. As soon as something, we always think the negative. Been programmed. I went after God taught us this last week. I canceled Netflix. That's the only thing I had. And I went, I, I, I got a whole year subscription to Pure Flix. And it's a change. Man, very, very honest. It is a that's that's different. I have not been watching what we call regular TV in a week. Yep. <laughs> I've been a vegetarian for 18 years. It was easier becoming a vegetarian. Giving up all meat, fish, chicken, turkey, everything. Easier doing that than it was watching something that, and you know, we're going to have to help. Man up, we're going to have to help. Because these people out here can't act. The quality 
is not wonderful. So we we going to have to we going to have to do something to help. Cuz David, I'm looking at this and I'm like if they got on TV, we we going to have a series. And so Jasmine asked me, said, well, who in the church knows how to act? I said, every single one of them. <laughs> every member of our church knows how to act. Have you met them, Jasmine? Every one of them knows how to act. Act like they like you. Act like they love God. Act like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Every member knows how to act. We can put them in any part. But I'm very serious. I, that, that is what's difficult about Christian television. They, the quality has to come up. It just has to come up. And I don't say that as a negative. I say that as a motivation. For those of you who have ideas, you writing plays and stuff. We got to get stuff going. Okay. All right. Now, listen at this quote. I found this in my studies. I have never seen a bad television program because I refuse to. God gave me a mind and a wrist that turned things off. Now, see, this was back in the day with no remote control. You had to turn it off like that. Okay, that's, that's wrist. That's what that meant. And this is Jack Parr, the author and comedian who virtually created The Tonight Show for NBC. Um, Johnny Carson took over from him. And then um, what's the guy that took over for Johnny Carson? Jay Leno. Oh, y'all up late. <laughs> and now it's Jimmy Fallon. Y'all go to bed. How y'all know all this stuff? Do I need to re-preach that message about going to bed early, getting your rest? Oh, yeah, yeah, Jimmy Fallon. Now, I, I, I do like those um, things Jimmy Fallon does. I watched the, the, the um, what is it called? Thank you. The thank you. Yeah, the thank you. Ding, 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 <laughs> Those are hilarious. I love them. Okay. See? See how we get? I can't even watch that no more. I just, uh, I forgot. No? Can't, can't watch it no more. Solid said, Jimmy Fallon? We can't watch it? <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, comedians, y'all. Christian comedians. Y'all need to put stuff out. Oh, man. Y'all help me, please. I'm fasting from TV. But this ain't no fast. This is a lifestyle now. Like when I first started becoming a vegetarian, somebody said, oh, this is just a fad. That's what they told me. They said, this is just a fad. You, 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 you'll quit. You'll grow out of it. It's an 18-year fad then. Psalm 101. Verse 3, I will set no base or wicked thing before my eyes. Talking about television. Well, it wasn't TV back in the day. You know, they didn't have TVs back in the day of David and Noah. Yeah, okay. Uh, the electricity hadn't even been invented yet. Do you know what amazes me? Everything that we see. This is, this is just amazing. Look at everything. Just take a look around. Everything, this plexiglass, you know, the, 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 all of this, and the, the wiring and stuff, the light, the light bulbs. All of this was created from just earth right. and animals on earth. Wires, everything, tile, toilet paper, everything, piano, drums. All we had was just earth, animals, trees, minerals in the earth. That was it. And we have come up 
with all of this stuff. You ever thought about it like that? That is absolutely amazing. We got cameras. How are you going to get cameras out the ground? Remarkable. God, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, my mother's mother, she said God did great things and he left greater things for us to do. Amen. That was one of her quotes. And that's the truth. So let's do great for God. Amen. I will set no base or wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them who turn aside from the right path. It shall not grasp hold of me. We have to be so careful what we watch, what we set before our eyes. Because whatever we set, it's going to grasp a hold of us. Be careful with the books, the movies. <sighs> movies. Got to, it's got to go. It's just got to go. So what should we allow to entertain us? But again, please be careful. Please be careful what you put before your eyes. I do know that these messages won't impact everybody like they impacted me. Now, quite a few members came up to me and said, you know, God had been dealing with me about television. He had been dealing with me about that anyway. So this was just confirmation. But I know some people are like, mm, mm, mm. and then some people are like, yeah, the shoe, I can say that $70 every month paying for cable. Up to you. I'm not saying you're going to hell if you don't do it. I'm just saying you have a better quality of life in the kingdom of God on earth. If you be careful. I mean, the Bible is very plain and clear. Amen. All right. So what should we allow to entertain us? Well, let's look at the word entertain. I didn't just look at the definition. I studied. Is it called etymology? Study of words? Huh? Etymology. Thank you. I said etymology. I'm from only for etymology. <laughs> etymology. <laughs> That's what it is. Etymology. I, I, I studied the actual origin of the word. Look at this. Entertain means this. To hold the attention of pleasantly or agreeably. That's what entertain. Let me, let me hold your attention. Let me hold it. To divert. To cause someone or something to change course or to turn from one direction to another. I thought I was just watching a movie. I thought I was just watching a TV show just to entertain me. This is the literal, please study behind me. All I did was copy and paste. I said, what the devil have I allowed to happen? What's going on? Divert? Cause someone or something to change course or to turn from one direction to another? To amuse, and then I, it showed me what amusement down at the bottom part to keep someone in a certain frame of mind. That's what entertain means to keep you in a certain frame of mind. Oh, Father, help us every day, every time. To and, and this is amuse to allow something to consideration of opinions, notions. We allow what we watch to detain us, to hold our attention so that it can impart into us opinions and notions, consideration. And because you're already in a state of reception, the suggestions are allowed. I heard G. Craig. Lewis say entertainment means to literally detain you so something can enter you. But I had to search this out for myself. And that's what hold your attention so that you can allow something to consideration of opinions and notions. I'll consider this because you got my attention now. All this stuff is happening while we're being entertained. Oof. So, let me ask you that question. What are you going to allow to entertain you? Amen. Yes. 
I was like, they really put this in the dictionary. They could have at least hit it so nobody would know what entertainment is all about. I'm going to a show. Yeah, I just want to relax. Oh, you're going to relax, all right. You're going to relax your hold on your own mind. You're going to allow things. Now I see why God said at, at the beginning, because I wasn't thinking about this part of the message. Why he said people's attention, they're paying attention to the wrong things and allowing things to hold their attention. I wasn't even thinking about this part. Now I understand what he's saying. Like, I want your attention so that you won't be bothered. Soon as something happened, you worry. Soon as something happened, you fear because you've been programmed by this world stuff. If I have to watch acting that's under par, <laughs> no quality, just to keep my mind right, child, please, I'm going to do that. Jeremiah 9, 13 through 15. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back. Eddie told me when I came in the office, he looked up wicked. Was that the word? The wicked? He looked it up. And it, it's literally the name of Belial. Belial. When he said Belial, I looked at him because I know Belial is a demon. I said, well, goodness gracious. We have to be so careful about every single thing that we are allowing to entertain us. Please be careful, be careful, be careful. I used to have this habit. I don't know if you've seen, like when you look at the um, license plates, you know, now you can say like great GR and the number eight. And so I would try to figure out what they would, because they would use letters and numbers and try to figure out what, they're actually saying the phrase or the word. And I was riding. I was trying to figure one out. And the Holy Spirit said, stop doing that. Because some people are actually putting curses there. So that you'll say it. You'll think it. And it'll bring a curse to you. He said, stop reading every single thing that you see. I said, well, the devil is just trying everything. Even on license plates. <laughs> Be careful what we put before our eyes. And the Lord says, Jeremiah 9, 13, the Lord says, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them. Forsaken my law. I set my law before you. You forsook it. Goodness gracious. And have not listened to and obeyed my voice or walked in accordance with it. The Holy Spirit had me to look at this. I set my law. It wasn't written. It wasn't, everybody didn't have a piece of paper of God's law. He said, I set that before you and you haven't listened to or obeyed my voice. And I was like, that's just like television. It's set before us, but who watches television with no sound? The pictures really don't matter. We can see that we want to hear. It's set before us and you have not listened to, nor have you obeyed my voice. And you definitely haven't walked in accordance to what I've said, which is my law. I'm like, wow, wow, wow. And so, but you walk stubbornly after their own hearts. But have walked stubbornly after their own hearts and after the Baals, as, which are false gods. As their fathers taught them. Then he said this. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts. Anytime you see Lord of hosts, basically God is angry because the hosts are his warring angels. So anytime you see Lord of hosts, God is in fighting mode. All right. Anytime you see that in the Bible, remember that. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them, even this people with wormwood. That's rotten wood. And give them bitter and poisonous water to drink. Why? Simply because you forsook my law. I said it before you. You didn't want that. You didn't, you didn't want um, the, 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 the bad acting. No, you switched. You went back to, 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 to other flicks. Mm, 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 mm. So then this is going to happen. I'm going to fight you. 
This is what, this is what you're going to eat, and this is what you're going to drink. Because you refuse my law. You don't want to, who want to, who want to just see the Bible all the time? Oh, okay. You refuse what I set before you. Christian stuff all the time? Don't you get tired of that? The Bible says when you wake up in the morning, I want you to talk about the word when you go to sleep. Put it as front lips to you. Put it on your forehead. Put it on your hand. Let the word be all the, all the, all the time. That's the word of God. So I say, oh, that's just fanatical. Well, tell God that. Let's see how that conversation goes. If we remove what God set before our ears, we will follow the replacement which will make us. Whatever you set before you, whatever, you will follow whatever you replace God's word with, his law. And whatever you follow, again, it's going to make you. Whatever we follow is going to make us. Why do we act a particular way? Look at what you're following. Please look at what you're following. You make certain decisions and you don't feel good in your spirit about it. What led me here? What am I following? Something led me here. I, God, sent my son Jesus so that you can see how we live, how we want you to live. You can see it plainly. That's why Jesus was here on the earth. And he's still saying it now, just let me influence you. I want to be the one to influence you. Well, Apostle Wall, why didn't you just simply say, y'all don't watch TV no more, don't watch movies no more? Because... I'm not going to forsake TV and movies if it's not in the word, if it's not teaching me in the word. I need to see it for myself. And it's not just TVs and movies, but you know what else we have to be careful of? Other people who've been influenced by television and movies and they have been influenced by people who were influenced by this, this, that, and the other. Like I asked last Sunday, what, what would this world be like if there were no television, no movies? What, what influence would we have? What else, what, what else would be left? No television. There are a whole slew of things you probably would have never eaten, but you saw it on TV and you went and got it. Dress code, thought patterns, decision-making templates. If this ever happened, I'm going to always do this. Simply because of what we saw on TV or another influence that did not come from God. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you for teaching us. Thank you for having our attention and forgive us, Lord God, for diverting our attention to other places. Father, I know your heart because you, you allowed me to hear you. And there are people who are literally being led into destruction. And asking you to deliver them from some place that you warned them not to go. Father... I know what I'm sensing and some people literally don't feel that watching TV or reading certain books or going to certain movies, that those things aren't damaging. Father, all I can do is present your word. It was presented to me and I believe you. I believe you. I, I know what you're saying and I and my household will follow through. We have followed through ever, ever since last Sunday and we'll continue to follow through, Lord. Because this is a warning. This is a warning. 
And we thank you, Lord God, for speaking to us. We're not against the television industry. We're not trying to take the advertising dollars, which are in the billions, out of the economy, which would definitely bring homelessness and all of so many different things because people work in these industries and that's how they're, they're feeding their families and sending kids. Father, that's not our goal. That's not our purpose. We're not trying to start a movement. We're just hearing your word and we're looking at our lives and we're looking at our mindsets and we want to do better and be better for your glory. Let thy will be done, I pray. Let thy will be done, I pray. We're going to follow you. We're going to do your will. You didn't force this on us. I don't feel as if you forced this on us. I feel it's just as the scripture said. In Jeremiah, you just simply said it before us. That's all. You said it before us. You're not forceful. Jesus wasn't forceful. Jesus just talked. He said to come after him. That's all. And then he taught us how to come after him. He said, let me influence you. For, forget yourself. Forget your own interests. Deny yourself. I don't want anything or anybody to influence you but me. Mm, 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 mm. And Lord, this morning when I was in the bathroom getting ready for church, you said to me that some people... When they are judged by Jesus in the end, they're going to say, well, Lord, you saw what they did to me. That's why I said what I said. That's why I did what I did, because you saw what they did to me. And Father, by your Holy Spirit, you told me. And I'm glad you reminded me, Holy Spirit, that Jesus it's not going to judge us based on what somebody did to us, but based on how we responded according to God's word, because we're just being judged by your word. We're being judged by your word, Lord. Even if somebody does wrong to us, there is a way you told us to respond. You said to love. You even said if somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. You said if somebody steals your jacket, give them your overcoat. There's a certain way you're expecting us to respond. Yeah. 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 Who's going to turn the other cheek? When movies say if somebody hits you, you hit them back. Hmm. How are we going to give our overcoat and somebody say on TV, you steal something, you call the cops. You call the cops. Yeah, I know you did it. Yeah, I, yeah, I know who you are, but you still. No heart to minister, no heart to help. Yes, yeah, it's very different, Lord, because we've been so influenced by the world until to be influenced by you seems silly. Seems silly. But I've seen so often, even the little movie, the little videos on Facebook. I'm thinking about this gentleman who somebody was, he had these canisters of gas in his truck. And he came back out and somebody was stealing his gas. And he gave it to him. He said, no, you can have it. You can have it. And just shared Christ. Just shared Christ. Seems silly. We look at that and say, wow, he is something else. But Lord, it's supposed to be normality. It's supposed to be how, how we live. No, we don't want people going around stealing from us. That is, that's not what you were saying to just let people take advantage of us. That's not what you were saying at all. But it's the heart of how we respond to the matter. That's what you're saying, Lord. You want to influence us with your heart. You want us to influence the world with how you influence us. Help us, Lord God, to get the right mindset and to get the understanding that we need. 
We need it, God. We need it. You love us and you care for us. So, to make it plain, it's not the act that someone does that you want us to focus on. It's their heart, their soul that you want us to focus on. Because if we witness to them, bring them to church, bring them to Bible study, get them involved, that could very well be the last time they do that act to anyone else ever and live for you. So we can either treat them like a criminal or love them like a soul needing a savior. Which is the way you influence us. There's certain people we don't even want to hang around because they don't make us look good. They don't, they don't make us look up to par. They don't make us look like we're of a particular uh, higher echelon. We're not an upstanding citizen in society if we're seen with the wretched. If we're seen with one who just doesn't dress the part or smell the part. Oh, you can look at them and tell they do this. You can look at them and tell we don't want to be a part of that. Because of how the world has influenced our mentality to try to be socially accepted. Forgive us, Lord. So, Father, we repent for allowing any influence other than you. Not our will, but thy will be done. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Mm -mm -mm. There may be someone here now. You're not saved. You don't know God the way you want to know him. Or maybe you were saved and you kind of slipped away and you want to come back to him. If everybody here, if you, everybody, if everybody will bow your heads just one more time for me and close your eyes. I want to ask those who say, I need to come back to God or I've never been saved and I want to give my life to God. I need a do over or I need to come to him, Period. With every head bowed, every eyes, every eye closed. I'm just going to simply, I'm not going to ask you to stand. I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar. I will ask that you just simply put up your hand and put it back down. Saying, I need to come back to God. I need God. If you're here, just put your hand up and put it back down. Amen. Amen. Even those listening and watching, this is for you as well. Anyone else say, I need to come back to God. Those who lifted your hands, the word of God teaches us that we have to confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead and we'll be saved. Saved from that eternal damnation that's not meant for us. So for those who lifted their hands here and those listening and watching, all I want you to do is just repeat after me as we pray and say, Father, I come before you right now by Jesus Christ who died for me. And I know you raised him from the dead. Raise me now from the death of all my sins. Forgive me, Father, and save me. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and live your life through me so I can please the Father. Thank you for it right now. I'm saved. I belong only to you. I'm influenced by you and will be influenced by you. Thank you for all these and other blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, you told me just then that there are some people in here who really need strength. They've been going through some weak times. There, there's, there's been some weakness. And Father, I pray right now. And Father, even as you've just, you've just given it to me, I release your strength to those in here and those listening and watching who need strength. Strengthen their mind. They, they feel weary on this journey. They, 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 they feel as if they're, they're just about to faint spiritually and some even naturally. It's like I, I, I just feel like I, I just can't take anymore. It's like all my strength is gone. Father, I release your strength to them now in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Strengthen their minds. Yeah. Their hearts need to be strengthened. And there's nothing wrong with it. Lord God, we all go through things that, that, that just kind of bring us down. But Lord, strengthen. Strengthen, Lord God. And with that strength, they'll be able to serve you. They'll be able to love you with their decisions, with their lives. Bring them back up to the strength that they once had in you. We thank you and bless you and praise you for it now. Thank you, God. It's done. In Jesus' name, it's done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Somebody watching, I don't know if it's live or later, but somebody watching, you literally felt it. I, I just saw it like come all over you. You felt it. You got it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 